Around 5000 BC, we, Homo sapiens, were genetically modified by space aliens. These aliens first landed where the river Euphrates enters the Persian Gulf. The reason is that in that area, a high concentration of what is called monatomic gold is found in the seawater. While nowadays, the highest concentration is found on the islands of Hawaii. The aliens were members of the Anunnaki Empire and were on a quest to find this metal that is supposed to enhance and repair all bodily functions and stop the body from aging. Monatomic gold is what is called a superconductive metal. Superconductivity means that if you transport, for example, electricity through a line made of this material, you would not lose any energy as a result of heat dissipation. So if you input 100% of energy, you also output 100% of energy. Now apply this principle to your brain, which is a huge sensitive electrical machine. The monatomic gold makes your neural pathways act like quantum drive superhighways. This means that all your senses will receive input optimally. In turn, these inputs will be processed optimally and those parts of your brain you don't use will become more active, so enhancing your memory, making you better understand problems, allowing you to sense evil, detecting lies, becoming telepathic and even being able to time travel in your mind by seeing the past or the future. So the Anunnaki, which is the name of the empire which includes races like the Saurian, or as they are called the Reptoids, the Argarians, or Nordics, because of their human looks, and the Greys from Zeta Reticula, were looking for monatomic gold. This involved enormous effort because it had to be extracted from seawater, or by processing it in such a way that the gold, usually in pairs of eight atoms per molecule, could be separated into individual particles. In this fashion, the monatomic elements were separated from the multi-atomic cousins. In a similar way, uranium-235 is produced. For the use as intelligent slaves, the Anunnaki took a man, let's call him Adamski, and took out a part of a rib. This is because the rib is a part of the human body that can be removed without causing too much damage. And because the rib contains bone marrow, it's a perfect source for DNA. The Anunnaki modified the DNA for a better manipulation of the humans and implanted it into a woman. Let's call her Mulva. Mulva then had children with Adamski and their children were, just like Mulva, genetically modified. These humans worked for the Anunnaki, but not a lot of humans knew about the Anunnaki. And then, for some reason, the Anunnaki disappeared. An interesting detail is that the symbol for human DNA resembles the word Ya, which is God. But surely, this is a coincidence. Now, some humans received part of the knowledge of the Anunnaki. The last known humans were the Jewish people who carried the Ark on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Before them, the Ark was in the lands of the Sumerians, Babylonians and Tibetans. This Ark, not the Ark of Noah, was known to have powers beyond human imagination. It could levitate and deliver the fire of stars, a dangerous firework-like display of power that occurred when the monatomic elements became unstable. To make them stable again, you needed to know certain secrets, and with those secrets, you could preserve the Ark and thus its powers. The humans who were close to the secrets of the Ark had long and prosperous lives. The best known was Methuselah, who lived to the age of 950. Wherever the Ark is, the culture thrives, and over the centuries it moved from Jerusalem to Rome to London, and is now supposed to be in the United States of America. The Ark always moves west, and will always keep moving west. 
From the very beginning, the people who own the Ark have never given it away, and great care is given to preserve the bloodline's purity of the holders of the Ark. Renowned conspiracy theorist David Icke studied the bloodline of George W. Bush. This he traced back all the way to the Sumerians, a people who lived in the southeastern part of what is now known as Iraq, where the river Euphrates meets the Persian Gulf. The secrets of the elements of the Ark, scientifically known as Orms, orbitally rearranged monatomic elements, are nowadays hidden by secret societies that have control over society worldwide. The word Orm is the same as the Hebrew word which means the tree of life. Orms consist of eight metals. These eight metals are ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, and silver, known as the light platinum group, and osmium, iridium, platinum, and gold, known as the heavy platinum group. Gestation of these metals in monatomic form prolongs life and enhances and repairs bodily functions. By following what is called a wide-spectrum diet, we can provide our bodies with monatomic superconductive elements. In other words, by eating a lot of grapes, carrots, all blue and dark red fruit and vegetables, and also much other fruit, vegetables and fish. There are countless fragments of footage shot by both Russian and American astronauts which show the vast number of lights that seem to be attracted by releases of electromagnetic energies by both the Earth and man-made objects such as satellites. In Building 8 of the Johnson Space Center in Texas, the USA, high-resolution pictures taken by satellites are photoshopped each day to remove proof of aliens. In the film, The Secret NASA Transmissions, the footage, it becomes clear that astronauts have grown accustomed to these strange anomalies, and that even in 2000, an unprecedented cooperation between NASA, the Russian Space Agency, and a committee of UFO experts was formed to share knowledge on this subject. To better understand this whole story, a few revelations are in place. Everything vibrates because atoms vibrate, and that is because the subatomic particles are in harmonic resonance, a fancy word for vibration and keeping themselves in equilibrium. Gravity is vibration generated by the presence of mass, and it can be neutralized by altering the harmonic resonance of the gravitational field. In other words, if you generate vibrations, you can alter gravity, and with superconductive materials, the amount of energy needed for generating the vibrations is greatly reduced. A practical example of reducing one vibration with other vibrations is the use of anti-sound. If you instantaneously produce the exact opposite waveform that comes towards you in the form of sound, the sound will cease to exist. This is called destructive interference. One of the forms of creating anti-gravity is called auditive levitation, a method used by Tibetan monks to elevate rocks over 250 meters high and 250 meters distance. By arranging drums and trumpets extremely precisely, together with some 100 men chanting, all arranged in a precise manner, the monks, after about five minutes, could levitate a rock weighing a ton and place it exactly where they wanted it. Theorists around the world theorize that huge monuments like those of the Egyptians and Mayan people were built this way. Other examples of anti-gravity we find in the vast amount of UFO sightings. These UFO sightings are actually experiments run by governments in their search for anti-gravity propulsion. So, if the technique is known, 
why don't we all transport using anti-gravity propulsion?